Please note, this replacement cannot be done while the tape library is still in the rack. You will need to remove the library from the rack to complete the replacement. When we get to the point in the video where we state that the library needs to be removed from the rack, we strongly suggest that you use either a server lift or have multiple people present to help remove the library for safety reasons. Today we will be showing you how to replace a picker assembly in an IBM 3576 tape library. Please note, the library will need to be powered down for this replacement. You will need to schedule downtime with the system administrator before powering down the tape library. Also, all data and cleaning tapes will need to be vacated from the library prior to this replacement. It is very important to note that there are two generations of picker that can go into the 3576. As you are looking at these two pickers, please note that the M1 here on the right is made with a bronze colored metal, while the M2 picker on the left is made of a thinner silver metal. Also, the M2 picker has an M2 stamped on the end of it, which you can also see when it is installed in the library. Another very important thing to note is that the M1 picker assembly consists of two separate pieces. The first piece here is the robotic hand with the silver metal slider, which is what grabs the tapes and moves them back and forth. The second piece is the Y-axis assembly, which is what allows the hand and slider to go up and down inside the library. The Rocket Platform sells the M1 picker assembly with the Y-axis already installed as one complete unit. If you have procured an M1 picker from somewhere other than the Rocket Platform website, please ensure that it has both pieces as a defective Y-axis could be the reason your 3576 library is having issues. If you need to order an M1 picker assembly from the Rocket Platform, Please use part number 23R6171. If you need to order an M2 picker assembly, please use part number 45E6348. This will ensure that you get the proper replacement. Please remember, when replacing the picker assembly in this machine, it is imperative that you replace it with the same version as they are not interchangeable. Prior to any work being done in the library, the system administrator needs to completely vacate all data and cleaning cartridges from the library. Now, if you only have a base control unit with no expansions above or below, keep watching from here. If you have only expansions below your control unit, please skip ahead to 6 minutes and 41 seconds. If you have expansions both above and below your control unit, please skip ahead to 11 minutes and 44 seconds. If you have only a base control unit, the first thing you will need to do is power off the library. Once you have gotten approval from the administrator that downtime is ready and all tapes have been vacated from the machine. Hit the power button on the front of the library one time and wait for the library to power itself off. Once this is done, go around the back of the library and flip both of the power supplies in the control unit to the off position. At this point, before removing any hardware, please label all tape drives and cables in the machine with their positions so that once the picker replacement is complete, you will be able to put everything back in its proper place. Once everything is labeled, you will need to remove all cables from the machine, followed by all of the tape drives and tape drive bay filler plates. Please put everything in a safe place nearby so that it will not get damaged while replacing the picker. Once this is done, you will also need to remove both of the terminators from the library. These are the silver connectors located on the left-hand side of the rear of the library. You will see a terminator at the very top and another at the very bottom. To remove these, squeeze their clips gently and pull straight backwards to remove them. Set them to the side to be reinstalled later. Now you will need to undo the screws that secure the unit to the rack mount kit. Next, you will need to remove the library from the rack and put it on the flat level surface to work on it. Once you have the machine on a flat level surface, you will need to remove the top cover and then the picker assembly. The top cover is held on by four Phillips head screws, two in the front and two in the rear. Once you have the top cover off, you can now remove the picker. With the top cover off, you will be able to look down inside and see the picker assembly. You can reach down and gently start pulling it upwards until it is at the top of the machine. At this point, you can remove it from the tracks, being careful not to rip the picker cable that is still attached. You will then use a Torx size 10 screwdriver to undo the silver screw connecting the picker cable to the picker. Once this screw is undone, you can remove the cable carefully and let it retract back into the control unit and set the faulty picker aside. You are now ready to install the replacement picker. To install the picker, first connect the picker cable to the rear connector of the picker. Then carefully line up the front and back wheels with the guide channels going down the tracks. 
lower the picker carefully, ensuring that it is level front to back. To be sure this is the case, compare the positioning of the topmost wheel of the picker assembly with the top edge of the track, both front and rear. What you want is for the top edge of the wheel to be even with the top edge of the track for both front and rear tracks simultaneously. If one wheel is either a bit above or a bit below the edge of the track, you will need to pull the picker out and try again. This may take a couple of attempts, even for those experienced in replacing these assemblies. Please don't get discouraged, just take your time. Now you can replace the top cover of the library, making sure to tighten down all four Phillips screws securely. Then carefully slide the control unit back into the rack. Install all tape drives and or drive bay filler plates in their respective positions. Install the terminators, being sure that they are clipped and secure and that you do not bend the pins when installing them. Last, install all cables that you removed prior to working on the library. Flip all power supplies to the on position and then go around to the front of the library and press the power button and wait for the library to initialize. You must make sure that the library comes up clean without any errors. If there is an amber light below the operator panel after the library initializes, you will need to log in as an administrator and examine if they are related to the work that was just performed and clear them. If you have any questions in regards to examining and clearing operator interventions, please see the link in the description below for our video about 3576 operator interventions. If you are having any more difficulties after this, please open up a support ticket through the Rocket Plus customer portal. If you have expansions only below your control unit, the first thing you will need to do is power off the library. Once you have gotten approval from the administrator that downtime is ready and all tapes have been vacated from the machine. Hit the power button on the front of the library one time and wait for the library to power itself off. Once this is done, go around the back of the library and flip all the power supplies in the control unit and all expansions to the off position. Before removing any hardware, please label all tape drives and cables in the machine with their positions, so that once the picker replacement is complete, you will be able to put everything back in its proper place. Once everything is labeled, you will need to remove all cables from the machine followed by all tape drives and tape drive bay filler plates. Please put everything in a safe place nearby so that it is not damaged while replacing the picker. Once this is done, you will also need to remove all of the terminators and chassis interconnect cables from the entire library. These are the silver connectors located on the left-hand side of the rear of the library. You will see a single terminator at the very top and another at the very bottom. You will also see an interconnect cable between each chassis module in the library. To remove these, squeeze their clips gently and pull straight backwards to remove them. Set them to the side to be reinstalled later. Now you will need to undo the screws that secure the unit to the rack mount kit. Then you will need to remove the entire library as a single unit from the rack and put it on a flat level surface to work on it. We strongly recommend using a server lift or having multiple people helping to do this for safety reasons, as it is a very heavy machine. Once you have the machine on a flat level surface, you will first need to remove the top cover, then the picker assembly. The top cover is held on by four Phillips head screws, two in the front and two in the rear. Once you have the top cover off, you can now remove the picker. The picker removal procedure will depend on the number of expansions you have below the control unit. If it is only one expansion, you will be able to just reach down inside and pull the picker up gently until it is at the top. If there are two or more expansions, you will need to open the main door on the front of both expansions and the control unit. To do this, first slide the IE stations of the expansions and the control unit out. If they are locked, you will need to use the manual release. This can be found at the bottom of each IE station. It is a small hole that you can slide a thin screwdriver in and trip the release to unlock the IE station. Once all IE stations are slid out, you can pull each main access door open. Once they are all open, you can reach inside and guide the picker upwards, feeding it through the expansions until you are able to reach it from the top of the control unit. At this point, you can remove it from the tracks, being careful not to rip the picker cable that is still attached. You can use a torque size 10 screwdriver to undo the silver screw connecting the picker cable to the picker. Once this screw is undone, you can remove the cable carefully and let it retract back into the control unit and set the faulty picker aside. Now you can reinstall the new picker. To install the replacement picker, first connect the picker cable to the rear connector of the picker. Then, carefully line up the front and back wheels with the guide channels going down the tracks. Lower the picker carefully, ensuring that it is level front to back. 
To be sure this is the case, compare the positioning of the topmost wheel of the picker assembly with the top edge of the track, both front and rear. What you want is for the top edge of the wheel to be even with the top edge of the track for both the front and rear tracks simultaneously. If one wheel is either a bit above or a bit below the edge of the track, you will need to pull the picker out and try again. This may take a couple of attempts, even for those experienced in replacing these assemblies. Please don't get discouraged, just take your time. Now reinstall your top cover, making sure to tighten down all four Phillips screws completely. Now you are ready to get the library unit back into the rack. For safety reasons, please use either a server lift or multiple people to help lift the unit back into the rack. Once the unit is back in the rack, secure it using the appropriate screws and rack mount kit. Now install all tape drives and or drive bay filler plates in their respective positions. Install the terminators and interconnect cables, being sure that they are clipped and secure and that you do not bend the pins when installing them. Last, install all cables that you removed prior to working on the library. Flip all power supplies to the on position and then go around to the front of the library and press the power button and wait for the library to initialize. You must make sure that the library comes up with clean without any errors. If there is an amber light below the operator panel after the library initializes, you will need to log in as an administrator and examine if they are related to the work that was just performed and clear them. If you have any questions in regards to examining and clearing operator interventions, please see the link in the description below for our video about 3576 operator interventions. If you are having any difficulties after this, please open up a support ticket through the Rocket Plus customer portal. If you have expansions both above and below your control unit, there are some additional steps that must be taken to complete this replacement. However, before any steps are taken, the first thing you will need to do is power off the library. Once you have gotten approval from the administrator that downtime is ready and all tapes have been vacated from the machine. Hit the power button on the front of the library one time and wait for the library to cycle down and power itself off. Once this is done, go around the back of the library and flip all of the power supplies in the control unit and all expansions to the off position. At this point, before removing any hardware, please label all tape drives and cables in the machine with their positions, so that once the picker replacement is complete, you will be able to put everything back in its proper place. Now, once everything is labeled, you will need to remove all cables from the machine, followed by all of the tape drives and tape drive bay filler plates. Please put everything in a safe place nearby so that it will not get damaged while replacing the picker. Once this is done, you will also need to remove all of the terminators and chassis interconnect cables from the entire library. These are the silver connectors located on the left hand side of the rear of the library. You will see a single terminator at the very top and another at the very bottom. You will also see an interconnect cable between each chassis module in the library. To remove these, squeeze their clips gently and pull straight backwards to remove them. Set them to the side to be reinstalled later. Now undo the screws that secure the library in the rack. Then you will need to remove the entire library as a single unit from the rack and put it on a flat level surface to work on it. For safety reasons, we strongly recommend using a server lift or having multiple people helping to do this, as it is a very heavy machine. For all expansions above the control unit, there are two main things you will need to do. The first of these is to raise the picker tracks both front and rear. The second is to undo the thumb screws holding the expansions to the units below them. To raise the tracks properly, first we will start with the back of the unit and you must start with the very topmost expansion. Upon looking inside the back of the unit on the right hand side in front of the empty drive bays, you will see a black squeeze clip. Currently this is in the lowered position. In order to raise it you will need to squeeze the clip while simultaneously raising the entire assembly upwards. This is the track itself being raised and will provide a bit of resistance as it is spring loaded. Once you have the track raised as far as it will go, while still keeping upward pressure to hold the track up, release the top half of the squeeze clip. This will lock the track into place in the upward position and you can now release the upward pressure and the track will stay. While still in the back of the library, repeat this with all other expansions above the control unit, starting in order from the top and working your way down to the control unit. The last thing you will do in the back of the library is to undo the thumb screws holding the expansions to the units below them. These thumb screws are located just under the bottommost tape drive bay. Undo both thumb screws for all expansions above the control unit. You are now ready to move to the front of the library. Just as before, you must start with the topmost expansion and work your way down. First, start with raising the picker tracks. In order to access the picker tracks, you will need to open the main access doors. 
To do this, you will first need to slide the IE stations out completely. If the IE stations are locked, you will need to use the manual release. This can be located at the bottom of the IE stations. It is a small hole in which you can insert a thin screwdriver to trip the release and unlock the IE station. Once the IE stations are all slid out, you can swing the main access doors open by gripping them and pulling towards you. They will swing open towards the left, and you can now open them fully and they should stay in place. You will now see the same type of black squeeze clips to the left of the main openings in the fronts of the expansions. Using the same method as before, raise the tracks so that they are locked in place. Repeat this, working your way down for every expansion above the control unit. Now you are ready to undo the thumb screws that are holding the front of the expansions to the units below them. They are located at the bottom of the expansions, below the main opening, and can only be accessed while the main access doors are open. Undo all of the thumb screws for all expansions above the control unit. Once this is complete, you will be able to start removing the expansions one by one, starting with the top. Lift the top expansion off and place it safely out of your way. Repeat this with every expansion down to the control unit. You are now ready to remove the faulty picker. The picker removal procedure will depend on the number of expansions you have below the control unit. If it is only one expansion, you will be able to just reach down inside and pull the picker up gently until it is at the top. If there are two expansions, you will need to open the main door on the front of both expansions and the control unit. To do this, first slide the IE stations out of the expansions and control unit. If they are locked, you will need to use the manual release. This can be found at the bottom of each IE station. It is a small hole that you can slide a thin screwdriver in and trip the release to unlock the IE station. Once the IE stations are all slid out, you can pull each main access door open. Once they are all open, you can reach inside and guide the picker upwards, feeding it through the expansions until you are able to reach it from the top of the control unit. At this point, you can remove it from the tracks, being careful not to rip the picker cable that is still attached. You will now use a Torx size 10 screwdriver to undo the silver screw connecting the picker cable to the picker. Once this screw is undone, you can remove the cable carefully and let it retract back into the control unit and set the faulty picker aside. You can now install the replacement picker. To install the replacement picker, first connect the picker cable to the rear connector of the picker. Then, carefully line up the front and back wheels with the guide channels going down the tracks. Lower the picker carefully, ensuring that it is level front to back. To be sure this is the case, compare the positioning of the topmost wheel of the picker assembly with the top edge of the track, both front and rear. What you want is for the top edge of the wheel to be even with the top edge of the track, for both the front and back track simultaneously. If one wheel is either a bit above or a bit below the edge of the track, you will need to pull the picker out and try again. This may take a couple of attempts, even for those experienced in replacing these assemblies. Please don't get discouraged, just take your time. Then reinstall all expansions above the control unit, first securing the thumb screws and then dropping down the picker tracks, this time starting with the lowest expansion first and working your way up. You are now ready to get the library unit back into the rack. For safety reasons, please use either a server lift or multiple people to help lift the unit back into the rack. Once the unit is back in the rack, secure it using the appropriate screws and rack mount kit. Now, install all tape drives and or drive bay filler plates in their respective positions. Install the terminators and interconnect cables, being sure that they are clipped and secure and that you do not bend the pins when installing them. Last, install all cables that you removed prior to working on the library. Flip all power supplies to the on position and then go around to the front of the library and press the power button and wait for the library to initialize. You must make sure that the library comes up clean without any errors. If there is an amber light below the operator panel after the library initializes, you will need to log in as an administrator and examine if they are related to the work that was just performed and clear them. If you have any questions in regards to examining and clearing operator interventions, please see the link in the description below for our video about 3576 operator interventions. If you are still having any difficulties after this, please open up a ticket through the Rocket Plus customer portal. Thanks for watching. This has been another video by the Top 10 USA video production team. We look forward to sharing more content with you going forward, so please check out our YouTube channel and please subscribe so that you get notified whenever we release a new piece of content.